Hey everyone, it's Shelly from Pampered Chef coming to you from my kitchen. Thanks for stopping in to see what I am making today. So I am trying a new recipe. Some of you who have been following Pampered Chef, using products, um, trying out recipes over the years, might remember our idea of the ring and the braid. The idea that you can fill your ring or braid with a delicious filling and then bake it. So I am trying a bacon cheeseburger ring. I am using the Rock Rock Grill Stone here. Um, and we have our crescent rolls. So crescent rolls, you know, look like this. They come in a can, you get two packs, you just pull them apart, and then you can just go right on around your ring, okay, and layer them. And if you want to roll them out a little bit, we have, our baker's roller. You can just kind of smooth them all out as we get ready to do the filling. So, the Rock Crock Grill Stone, this black round stone, love it. You can use it for so many things. You can use it in the oven. Sure, you can do pizza or other things on it, rings, um, you know, really anything that you would want to bake. Uh, you can also use it out on the grill. So hence the name grill stone. So it's safe for you to do your grilled pizzas and whatnot out there. And you don't have to worry that it's going to break. Okay. It's also the grill stone is dishwasher safe. If you care to just put it through the dishwasher, um, for easy cleanup, but the, it is heat safe up to like 752 degrees. It's something crazy like that. So that's why I said you can use it on your grill. So if you have a big grill and you love to do grilled pizzas, grilled pineapple, grilled whatever, you can use this grill stone. But tonight I'm doing it in the oven, okay? So what I have done, let me just kind of shift myself here, is I have in the stainless steel bowls, I have my ground beef. So it's one pound of ground beef cooked down, okay? And you can throw in a little seasoning if you want. I'll be honest, the recipe I'm using um, calls for one pound of ground beef. You can put in some onion if you wish. I'm not following the recipe to a T, but um, I added a little garlic to my ground beef. And then I also did some bacon. So one of the things you could do is grab a piece of our cookware, which tonight I'm using the 10 inch stainless steel nonstick skillet. So you can brown your ground beef, okay? Um, but first, you could back that up a step and you could actually cook your bacon in there first is what they suggest and drain it. Then add your ground beef in there. I already had cooked bacon today, so I have it here ready to go. Love my professional shears. I just chopped it all up. And all I'm going to do is Throw the bacon into the bowl with the beef. And our nonstick stainless steel cookware is wonderful because our cookware has a lifetime guarantee. Everybody always wants to know that. Yeah, lifetime guarantee, okay? Easy cleanup, it can go in the dishwasher. It can be used on top of the stove, in the stove, okay? We have a 10 inch, we have a 12 inch, and we also have a wok. So you may want to check out, like I said, um, this stainless steel cookware that's nonstick. All right, it's beautiful, very easy to use, and very easy if you don't put it in the dishwasher to even wipe it out, rinse it, wash it, cleans up really, really well. Okay, so we have the bacon in here with the ground beef, so I'm just gonna give that a stir. Okay, and then in my three cup prep bowl, I have three-fourths cup of mayonnaise, three-fourths cup of ketchup, a third cup of mustard, and then we also are to add some pickles. So I used my manual food processor to chop up some pickles. Now we have homemade pickles because my husband loves pickles. I'm not a big fan of pickles, but like in this, I'll be okay. But he actually makes um, homemade I think they're called refrigerator pickles because we are able to grow cucumbers and so he makes pickles um, after our cucumber harvest and then we have the pickles all year long. So I have chopped up a few pickles in here in the manual food processor. If you don't have this in your kitchen, you're going to want to think about it. The manual food processor is 
like the partner to the food chopper. Um, manual food processor, you can process a few items at one time, whereas we know when we use a food chopper, it's like, oh, we're chopping broccoli or we're chopping nuts. Um, I am just chopping pickles in here, but I also love to chop onions in here because no matter what hacks I try, I still cry. So, um, so I have my pickles in here. So the manual food processor is great because it has silicone on the bottom to hold it in place and a lever for you to pulse, okay? And I'm going to just, let me scoot this. So you can just pulse, 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 all right? And then the top, you hand wipe or hand wash off, okay? But the blade, okay? Three different levels of the blade, so it helps you to control what you're chopping. Um, that can go in the dishwasher, and so can the bowl. And there's also a lid to the bowl. So I'm going to just throw the pickles in with the ground beef. And again, give it a stir. Try to keep it in the bowl. Pampered, not perfect, right? And then I'm also going to add some of our... Um, ketchup mixture. It says for you to add most of it, like three-fourths of a cup. Love these stainless bowls. Look at this with the finger hole, so you can hold on to it when you're stirring. Again, they have stainless steel on the bottom, so they um, adhere to your countertop, okay, so they don't move on you. Easy cleanup, dishwasher safe. They nest. They have measurements on the inside. They come with lids. Um, so lots you can do with the stainless steel bowls. I have a friend who uses the stainless steel bowls to, serve, to store her lettuce and greens with a damp paper towel. And she said they stay fresh for so long in the stainless bowl with the lid on it. So just an idea for you. Okay, so here is our filling and we're going to put it here on the ring and um, I think I'm going to use a scoop. I am just grabbed one out of the drawer here. This happens to be the large. Um, so we have the meat. They're asking us to use a couple slices of cheese, cheese and break them in half. Um, again, folks, use what you have in your house. If you don't have the exact ingredients, please don't fret over that, all right? Use what you have. So as you can see, I'm using the scoop and coming right along the inner ring, um, the inner part of the ring rather. So let's do this. I can tell you this because you're not here with me, unfortunately, that it does smell, um, smells very good. And if you love a traditional cheeseburg, my guess is um, you would love this ring. Now, like I said, some of you may have followed Pampered Chef for a long time. I'm here a long time. Um, when we were talking about braids and rings and things long, long time ago, um, the broccoli, um, the chicken broccoli braid or ring, always a popular one. And I have a friend that is still her favorite. So I'm just using what I have. These are actually um, slices of Velveeta. So you can just, like I said, layer it here, kind of pressing it down a little bit. Go right on around the ring. And the other thing about the rings and the braids is they always look so beautiful when they come out, right? So you can see that we have the ring filled, we have the cheese on. So now we're going to bring, I'm just going to bring the crescent roll point. Okay, so we have the points out. As you can see, we're going to bring the points over and tuck them. All right, I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm just gonna crisscross them, start somewhere and over and tuck okay over and tuck this one all right so i'm kind of doing a zigzag type 
motion. So if you're not sure what to make for dinner tonight, maybe try a braid or a ring. Um, the rings, like I said, super easy to do. You can see how fast I'm doing this. You don't have to be perfect, right? Like I said, pampered, not perfect. Now in my little one cup prep bowl, I have a whipped egg white. I also have my basting brush. If you are still using a paintbrush type device at home, you need to get rid of that. You need to get the silicone one. So much easier to clean up. Okay, so we're just gonna brush on some egg white. This will help it to brown. I'm at 375 with a preheated oven. And this is going to go in for about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, you can always sneak a peek at it in the oven. You want it to look nice and uh, golden brown. And I'll be sure to take a photo afterwards so that you can see it. Okay, so I think we got it all brushed, tucked. Okay, so into the oven it's going to go. Check this out. I guess if you wanted to even sprinkle some extra cheese on, or if you wanted to be more like a cheeseburger bun, you could sprinkle um, some sesame seeds on here. I don't have sesame seeds um, here at home, but that's something you could do to kind of um, jazz up the top a little bit. But it should brown up nice for us uh, in about 25 to 30 minutes. Like I said, oven is at 375. This is the um, bacon cheeseburger ring. Let me re recap real quick. So it was a pound of ground beef. Um, you could do four to six strips of bacon. I did four. And what you can do is cook your bacon in a skillet on top of your stove, drain almost all the bacon grease off, okay, and then cook your ground beef in there. You could add some seasonings. You could add onion. We added a little garlic. Um, I think the recipe actually does suggest onion. Okay, then on the side, you're combining for the sauce, three-fourths cup of ketchup, three-fourths cup of mayonnaise, a third cup of mustard, okay, and then you're going to chop up some pickles. So I just did a handful. I think I did like four homemade pickles um, and chopped them up. I said I'm not a huge fan of pickles, but it'll be all right that I eat them like this, okay? So then you're going to combine your sauce in with your ground beef and your bacon, okay? And you're going to use a scoop, or if you don't have a scoop, use a spoon. You're gonna put out your crescent rolls. Do not get your crescent rolls out until it's time to work, folks, because if you get them out too soon, they will not cooperate, okay? They get too warm, and then you will have trouble getting them apart. But crescent rolls are wonderful to work with. It's an easy tool. Um, if you want to grab some at the store and keep them on hand, but keep them in the fridge until you're ready to go. So two cans of crescent rolls, you can uh, roll it out a little bit, flatten it out, put your filling in, put your cheese on, any kind of cheese you want, and then you're going to lift over and tuck and put the ring together and brush it with an egg white, a whipped egg white, okay? So I hope you like this demo. I'm going to stick it in the oven and I will see you back in my kitchen next time.